Hi there. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Alistair Malcolm. I'm a glass artist based at Stourbridge Glass Museum here in the West Midlands. Let me tell you about all the changes that have been going on in the studio over the last six months and then what the effects of those changes have had and what an impact they're going to make. So I thought I'd start here in March 2023 and give you a quick tour of what my workshop looked like at this point. The hot shop consisted of a 50 kilo pot furnace, a gas reheating chamber and also a gas cooling oven. I was recycling a Dartington crystal waste and we were having to do a melt pretty much every day for about 10 hours to make sure that we were getting a good melt for the next day's work. Installed by a gentleman called Pete Howard, it was serviced really regularly, running beautifully efficiently. And it's a facility I was really proud of. Now to cut a long story short, it was back in August 2022 that we'd heard that around about April 2023, there were, we were going to experience some really, really big rises in energy costs. They were going to have such a big impact on the studio, I was going to have to really think hard about the studio's future. And I think at this point, I really started to question a lot of things about my life. You know, what were, were these increases in energy costs just a sign that um, I should maybe give up as a glass artist because financially it couldn't work and it was just too damaging for the environment? I guess it's fair to also say I was definitely fearful of change and, and certainly fearful of paying for that change. You know, I trust gas. I've been burning gas for years and that is what I knew. I think at this point, I have to point out, I was really fortunate in that I'm surrounded by a wealth of people that are just willing for the studio to, to survive and thrive. And I think that was the driving force behind me not giving up and wanting to see what options I had. Where could I go with this and how could I improve the studio's situation? My research took me all over the place and I found some really great suppliers and manufacturers all over the world. I chose to go with these two guys. They're, they're within you know an hour's drive of the studio, local experts in their own field. And I knew that these guys would serve me well. So on your screen right now, you're watching the left hand movie is Interpower delivering the electric furnace that I ordered. They rocked up bright and early in the morning. And then on the video on the right, you'll see me making the first piece. I wanted it to be a, a local firm that, that provided us with the equipment because for me, this is more than a capital purchase. This is, this is the very start of a new relationship that's going to potentially be with me for the next decade and beyond. You know, I want, I want a supplier that can help service, offer advice and just be there to support the studio as we go forward. Now, uh, I wanted to keep the scale of the furnace similar to that that I was used to. And so we've gone for a 50 kilo pot furnace again. To add to all the changes going on in the studio, at this point, we also switched from melting lead crystal to a non-lead lass and moved on to Boma, which is, a, as everybody knows, a really beautiful quality. So for those of you that want a few technical details, it's got a supply rating of 32 amps, a total installed power of 20 kilowatts with a maximum operating temperature of 1350 degrees centigrade. Plugged in and ready to go. And this is where the learning really began for us. So one of the things that I couldn't really share on social media was the fact that we got this ability to log in via an app and check what our furnace is consuming in terms of energy, minute by minute of every single day. And that has just been so interesting. Now take a look, this is what I call the lifeline of our furnace, you know, the heartbeat of the studio. Here's what the furnace does. So here, stage one, the furnace was warming up. Stage two, we've got a bit of temperature fluctuation as we filled on with um, cold cullet. There was a drop in temperature and then it rose again. Stage three, that's my working day. You can see where I opened and closed the door. We've got minor fluctuations in temperature. Four is a melt cycle 
and five is a working day without any filling on at the end of it. So that was time versus temperature. Now I can cross reference these graphs against a different graph which shows then the consumption day by day as well if I wish to. Now the chart on the left shows the consumption on a day by day basis. We've got some really high peaks where we've had to do really big fills. The lower peaks are where we haven't necessarily filled on that much or we've had a day off. And should I wish to, I could I could opt to look at the the energy consumed minute by minute. You can see a bar there which says every 10 minutes. Now, if I cross reference that against the charts which show me temperature, I can really get to learn how our actions save or consume energy. And this is where it's been like learning to blow glass all over again. I mean, the bar, the chart on the right shows we've learned that if we if we fill on with a preheated cullet, you can see how the fluctuation in temperature is vastly reduced. And I've cross referenced that and understood that it's also saved us a lot of energy. Here, similarly, you know, we've got we've got a couple of doors on the furnace. There's a sliding door, but also what we call this night door. Now, simply by by having that night door in position, you can see we've saved. I don't know. We've come down from 1.4 down to just over one kilowatt hour at various points, saving a lot of energy just by doing that operation. There are various other tricks we've learned, but here's another sweet one. We've got a little. Um, uh, a little shield that we put into the furnace during our working day. It obviously reduces the aperture. And again, I know from the statistics on the charts that this has also saved us a lot of energy. At this stage, I want to do a little bit of analysis for a comparison of the electric furnace versus the gas furnace and compare the kilowatt hours. Now, looking at uh, government sources, for every kilowatt hour that is consumed within the UK, it generates a certain amount of CO2. And we've got a different statistic for electricity. Now that varies from country to country, depending on how the national grid produces its electricity in the first place. Now, our old gas furnace consumed about 11,000 kilowatt hours a month and our new electric furnace consumes about 5,100 kilowatt hours a month. There's a lot of statistics I know, sorry about this. However, in terms of CO2, it equates to 22.2 tonnes of CO2 per year for the gas furnace and 11.6 tonnes of CO2 for the electric furnace. Now, what does that mean? It means we're putting in 10.6 tonnes less CO2 per year with the electric furnace. This sounds great, but what the hell does that mean? I, I just don't really understand it personally. You know, I look up in the air and go, well, where is it all? It's, it's a figure that doesn't really m make much sense to me. So I found this website which sort of enables you to um, turn these statistics into figures that make a little bit more sense to your daily lives. One tonne of CO2 would be produced if you drove an Audi A5 or 6 for about 3,556 miles. So in terms of the, the emissions that we've saved, that equates to us getting in that Audi A6 and driving one and a half times around the planet. What? I mean, I think it's worth taking just a second to celebrate that. And that's enough of that, because now I want to talk to you about the annealing oven. Now, we've asked for a, a micropore ins insulation to maximise the efficiency of this. It also had a, a multi-zone controller because it's quite a deep annealer. So this would just mean that we've got um, a good um, degree of control across the entire height of this kiln. The left hand video shows the, the installation process again. It was a fairly straightforward one. The right hand video when it starts will just show the first pieces coming out. So with a very similar sized chamber inside, it seems fair to now start to look at doing a comparison of the, the gas cooling oven against the new electric cooling oven. So let's see how that looks. So on a typical firing cycle, which would last for a full day, we'd, uh, we'd ramp up rather swiftly to 510 degrees centigrade, soak there for seven hours, and then have a controlled ramping down over the next 12 hours. Now, the beauty of the, the electric annealer 
is that there's a couple of magic buttons that you can press and it'll tell you how many kilowatt hours it's consumed in that period. Meanwhile, on the gas, uh, the gas consumption, we've obviously had to refer to the gas meter. So on a typical working day with the electric Lear, it's, it's reading 53.3 kilowatt hours. Now, if I, if I do a comparison with the gas Lear, it was using 22 cubic meters, which equated to 250 kilowatt hours a day. And that's 11.1 uh, tonnes of CO2 emitted per year. Now, the electric, uh, electric annealer, that was generating 2.7 tonnes of emissions per year, saving 8.4 tonnes. Again, another great statistic, but what did that mean? Well, if I take my imaginary Audi A5 or A6, it means that I would be generating the same amount of emissions if I were to drive around the planet another 1.2 times. So it's, a, it's another fantastic statistic and Kiln Care should be quite proud of themselves on that one, I think. Now, forgive the fast pace of this video, but we're not going to stop there because I'm now going to talk about the electric reheating chambers. Now, I've been working with glass for over 30 years and I haven't really seen any dramatic change in the design of these. And when you consider the developments of the car, I think it's about time that there should be some change and some improvements. It's one of the hottest pieces of kit with the smallest amount of insulation and the doors left wide open. So there should be room for a lot of improvement and I'm willing to give this a go. Interpower have developed this, this first version of the electric reheating chamber and again it comes with the the apps to to monitor all of the energy consumption and gain an understanding of um, what the new normal might be. Now it's already have had extensive trials at Tame Valley and at Interpower and, and I think we're all ready to draw some um, some comparisons if you like. You know my gas my gas Lear produces 15.6 tonnes of CO2 per year the early indications show this, this should only produce 9.5 tonnes. So it's another saving of 6.1 tonnes. Again, so that we can make sense of those figures, it's the equivalent of the amount of emissions, emissions that would be created in my Audi A5 or A6 if I decided to drive around the planet 0.9 times. There are still some test firings to do on the electric um, reheating chamber but this is currently how my studio looks with the three pieces of equipment installed and you can still see that there's the gas reheating chamber and gas annealing oven my gas furnace is still in storage underneath the platform there um, but for a moment let's just take a, a moment to consider the overall to total savings in emissions if you combine all three pieces of equipment so if we took that Audi A6, it would be the equivalent of driving it around the planet 3.6 times. So whilst plans have been developing on the ground, up above, I've also been applying for listed building consent to fit solar panels to the roof. Initially, it was just for the studio. We went back after getting permission for those to increase it to get some additional panels to cover generation for the museum. The dark orange ones are where the uh, panels will be powering the studio. The yellow ones for the museum. A win-win for everybody. Now, the solar panel companies will give you all sorts of diagrams to show you what level of... Um, light will come throughout the year and how that will generate when you can expect to get your, your payback and how much money you can expect to generate over a period of 25 years and i want to home in on this particular diagram now the black lines show a graph which shows the energy that they propose will be able to be generated spread across the year the gray line in the background shows what they might expect our consumption to be. Now, this was all produced before the furnace had been installed and before I had any data to say, you know, what the levels of consumption would be. I'm now, I can now superimpose a line over the top of this graph to show you where the, you know, where the furnace's consumption is so that we can gain an understanding of how much energy this 32 kilowatt system will actually cover. And when the red line's in there, you can see that the, the black shaded areas almost cover 
of the amount of energy required to keep that furnace at maintained at that temperature. Now, if you'll allow me a little bit of creative license to add the effects of this to our previous sort of installations, that would be the equivalent of 4.35 laps of the planet in my Audi A5. That's the, the reduction in our emissions that we're looking at. So what are the next steps? Well, we are going to be looking at providing feedback to Interpower on the electric heat reheating chamber making sure that it's user friendly and seeing if it needs any adaptations to the door. We'll be assessing the, um, the energy consumption and, and also, well, the next phase on the solar panels is to start looking at structural engineers reports. They're finalizing those reports as we speak. We're going to be researching into voltage optimizers, seeing how those might be able to assist the studio. Um, we're currently going through a grant application just to see if we can obtain funding to install the solar panels. And we're also looking at getting and acquiring an additional electric annealing oven. We'll be assessing, once we've been successful in installing the solar panels, we'll be assessing the, the generation and seeing how that has really affected the, the, the carbon footprint of the studio. One of the things that I've been passionate about is that 12 months ago, there was nobody around to really offer me any advice to this level, um, and I felt very lonely. Hopefully, there are a few of you out there that will benefit from me sharing this wealth of information, and I really wish you all the best with your practice. Good luck.